after I released my video yesterday on SPI decoding on the Siglent oscilloscope, uh, uh, somebody actually rang me up and said, well, uh, it's great, but do I really need four channels? So I'm just going to just recap now that you can just do this with two channels. I'm not going to go through the whole process again because you've watched that. If you haven't, go back, watch, watch the previous video. I'm going to show you the differences of how to do this if you've only got two channels. Okay, guys, let's just have a quick recap on the circuit. So here we've just got the same circuit as yesterday. We've only got the yellow probe attached and the blue. So yellow clock, blue MOSI for the input circuit. And everything else is exactly the same as it was yesterday. On the scope, all we've done is we've switched off channel 2 and channel 4 because we don't need them. So we've just got clock and MOSI. We need to make a few changes on here. So if we go back in, into the signal on the decoder, so we're on, we're on the decoder up here, go into the signal. We've still got clock attached and that's set, set exactly the same as it was yesterday. MISO is now disabled because we haven't got the, got the probe attached. MOSI is exactly the same as it was yesterday. But the changes what we've had to do here is cable select because we need the cable select. So what we've moved it to now is we've moved it from from the original setting, which was the low voltage cable select available. We moved it to clock timeout. So we're going to clock the time signal. And we need to set this limit. Now what this limit is, it is it's saying that the clock signal, the pulse must be less than or equal to that limit time for it to assume that the MOSI signal has a pulse, a valid pulse, and it's gonna and it's gonna take that data. We're gonna watch how we how we can actually measure that and get that exactly right in, in a moment. But to be fair, you can just whack it down to nothing and and collect a signal. Right, okay, so we've collected the signal, and you see it's, it's actually not decoded anything. We're just going to turn this up until we get above the clock signal, which I just happen to know is about here. There you go. And if we go back into the scroll, uh, list, scroll, we can see that we've we've now decoded that with just two probes. At least only the input. Obviously, we can't get the output as well. We've only got two probes. We need the clock and we need the MOSI. But you could, I guess, move the move this and, and look, look at the output. Check that right as a separate run. And to be fair, as long as I could turn that, I could turn that up. If we go back to signal, we could really whack that up in, in, in my case here. And it would still it would still compute like this let's look at measuring it properly if we zoom in what it's actually asking us to measure what it's actually looking at is one of those yellow pulses there so if we, we get the cursors on here it's actually measuring let's get a little bit further it's measuring the time between there and there approximately 248 nanoseconds as long as you've got that that trigger setting set f higher than that remember it's the trigger is less than or equal if the clock pulse is less than and equal to the to, to your setting then it will it will trigger so if we go back there 1.4 but sorry 1.84 microseconds is obviously less than uh, two, 248 nanoseconds so therefore it works but I wouldn't take it too far obviously because you do have some clock signals although quite long here it could trigger incorrectly so it's better to get that value something near to what, to what it should be actually expecting I hope that was useful guys if you think it is, please like, subscribe, obviously. Uh, it really does, does help. And I appreciate your time for watching. You guys take care. Goodbye.